I tell you what, there's not many servers who strike fear in the heart of a passer. But Samantha Riccio at the top of the charts. Riccio, there the hammer. Such a devastating weapon for the good of Troy. Just when you think last year's National Player of the Year could not improve. Benzant says it is my jail. I am not sure if there is defense for her. It's a graveyard. USC has won 87% of its games on home hardwood. Not so though for Washington has won two straight in this building. And dogs are ready for a fight again. Number two, an undefeated in the country against USC who comes in number 20. Pac-12 women's volleyball presented by Tatcha Carr. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Watson alongside the Olympian Evan Wong and welcome downtown LA. Well, this has always been a great series. North against South, two teams with great history in this sport, but it all changed last Last year in the Elite Eight on this floor, it was an epic game and it was the way it went down. It's changed everything. Bad blood, USC up two sets to love. Have a match point, have a swing for match, misses by two inches and the rest of history's changed. SC then went up to Seattle earlier this year, actually just earlier this month, October 1st at Alaska Airlines Arena and the Dogs took care of them quickly. And this is a USC team pick number two in the preseason conference, but Ebony Nwanabu getting over that back injury. It's been very slow for her. Really bright spot for USC. Samantha Bricio has been such a special player this whole year long. SC has got to stop Krista Van Zandt. She had 14 kills in that quick resetter last year in that epic Elite Eight. She had 38 kills. Washington has won four straight in the series. That is all-time best. Women of Troy, they need a signature win. they got to put their name on this one and do it early. It's number 20 against number two next on the Pac-12 Networks. That excites. Tonight's starting lineups presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. Washington is number two in the country. Unbeaten. USC is number 20. Cassie Strickland, the libero Washington, making that transition from the outside hitter position to the libero position very smoothly this year. On the other side, Alicia Ogum, really the, the Canadian star middle blocker, stepping up the game both offensively on the hitting and defensively become a very big blocking force for USC. Washington is coming off back-to-back -back sweeps of Utah and Colorado. That was up in Seattle last weekend. They're going to play UCLA on this trip as well. UCLA is number 16. SC comes in at number 20. SC is in sixth place right now in the conference. But things have changed for this SC team and a number of times this year. But let's just take it since the last time they played Washington in Seattle, October 1st. Since that time, they've settled on a lineup and they've won 5 of 7. Is this team better now? I love this lineup. I think Coach Mick Haley and what he's had to do is just putting together smoke and mirrors, putting different pieces in play. You talk about this team, only one libero. They have no DSs available and healthy tonight, and, and that's a big challenge. The other big challenge is, who do they go to on the pin? Do they go with Gillis? Do they go with Ruddins? Tonight, they are going to be starting Ruddins. He's a little more experienced, brings a little more blocking presence in that as well. So quick shot of Krista Van Zandt for Washington. She's their star, averaging nearly five kills a set. And for SC, Eddie Wadaboo. There's Van Zandt. Well, Van Zandt has been terrific against SC. Mentioned the 38 kills she had in that Elite Eight game last year. But here earlier against SC in just three quick sets, 14 kills and only three errors. It's consistency at high level. Washington in their traveling. Purple and black SC in the home whites. Washington has won four in a row against USC. USC owns the series. Washington has dominated the last two years. We're going to try at the first point. He said it was important for us to get off to a good start, but this team also needs to learn how to finish. <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. Samantha Bricio, great serve. Pounds one middle, easily handled. In back row by Tia Scambray. 
So, so we've received solid for Washington. Scambray, the freshman phenom, really been so impressed. She does have a weakness in her game. She's one of the better servers on this team, has been passed very solidly as well. Here's Cassie Strickland, who grew up in Southern California, Huntington Beach, and is back playing in front of friends and family. Blooming serve as well for her. Ebony Waterboo got her first touch on the right side. She wore seven for SC. Cross court, dig. Taylor Whittingham is the libero for SC. Overpass, and it catches the back line as he gets a break. You're going to really have to pay attention to number 11 in white. Really the X factor tonight. Elise Runs has been in that lineup the last three matches in the rotation and doing very good things. Needs to pick up offensively, though. Strangely enough, when SC turned things around and won 5 of 7, that's the same time that uh, Rudden's got more playing time. It's well inside the back line. Talked about one freshman. This is another freshman for Washington doing things that you would not expect. See Jones kind of projected to be a middle blocker. What she's done on the outside offensively. Also, her blocking number is the best and blocker for any Washington player. Chrissy Jones, another Southern California product from Los Alamitos High School. Just about 30 minutes out of the Galen Center. A little paintbrush there at the net by Hannah Schreyer. And too much for Aliche Pizza Gola for SC. 3 2 Washington. Back set to Wanabo. And rolled up the arms of Scambray. She handled it. Van Sant. Whittingham on the overpass. And flush nicely. Dream about those, don't you, Melly Wayne? Pretty good swing setting it up by Van Zandt. Van Zandt, interesting enough, we talked about the player, the, we talked about the great year she's had coming off her worst match of the season. Only hit 143, the low for the season. SC goes to the outside, the left side, the runs. Uh, I love that swing. I, I got to do uh, USC's match versus Stanford. Did not swing once down the line on that match. Hit a lot of cross court, got dug a lot. Swinging at the smaller blocker on the end. That's a pretty good start for her. You know, just talking with, with McHaley and some of the folks in the Galen Center tonight, it, the consensus is that we haven't seen SC's best volleyball this year. There's been injuries, there's been some strange afflictions. Got a couple of players uh, out, of the, out of the program this year. We went to film school and had tonsillitis. <laughs> and, and Nick Haley going with 14 different lineups in the 20 matches, and he really feels like he, he likes this one the best. And if you look at their nice, recent results, that Stanford match, really a missed opportunity. They won the first set. They were winning the second at 22-19 late. Really a chance to go up 2-0 against the, the number one team in the country. Missed opportunities. Mick Haley's won 350 games at two different schools, SC Texas, and he said to you and I before the match that this is the strangest year that he's coached because of all the injuries, all the, the strange absences with this team. And that's that's the byproduct that you talked about with the 14 different lineups for SC. Now he finally settled on one. Briso couldn't terminate the point. Gonna give her another nibble at the apple off the hands. Handled by Strickland. Double block by SC. That might have gone long. Wanda got her hands up. A double hit on SC. That really reversed. That that ball might have gone out, but I understand it's coming right at Wanda and your action is to put your hands up. And Mick Haley not happy. The last match I did here got a few bad calls, maybe three or four on his home turf. Really very sensitive to the refs lately. Melanie Way to serve for Washington. Don't you get more sensitive to the refs when you're losing? <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. And you can see early on Washington going after Rudd and really deciding that she's in the game. She hasn't been as experienced. Whittingham having a very good year. Bricio to pass her as well. Runs there, going to attack her with serves. Taylor Whittingham. SC's the barrel. Float serve. Washington runs the middle for the first time. So Belden was the... And they hit for Washington, didn't fish it, that's a touch. And we talk about the new lineup, and one of the key features for Mick Haley's new lineup is Wanda Blue playing six rotations for the first time in her career, giving her a chance to play herself in shape even more. Again, took by Whittingham, outside Bricio off double hands. Strickland for Washington. 
out of the back. Rose Van Zandt, but she had reached for it. The ball's in front of her and went three feet long. And early on, Woodham, the, the libero for USC, has been a key factor. Another dig, Natalie Heglin graduating the uh, libero of the year. The replacement this year has been doing a fine job. I remember uh, talking with McKaylee earlier this year and asked him about the changes. He says it's much, much more difficult to replace great passers than it is great hitters. And that's a more unique and, and, and more rare skill. Right. Good chance to win both this year. Number one in digging the other part of the feature. Young, you're going to see her. She's bigger blocker at the net also can attack. She will set the front row while Pizza Scola will set the back row. HSC on right, run here. Almost flush. Van Zant went to him to keep it off the floor. Cross court dug again by Whittingham. It's having a night already. Precio, the winner, make it nice. Six SC. You know, the pregame, it was interesting the different contrast between the energy level. USC was yelling and cheering in the top. Washington very working like very blase almost. And you can see the beginning of the match following that toad. USC is only five and five in conference. They need a signature win. They're off to a good start. Driver game is brought to you by Bank of the West. Pac-12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tachikara. You've got the ball, you bring the game. That's Tommy Trojan, stand century right in the heart of the USC campus, and they always keep him well in because Trojans are always in the spotlight. Just like McKaylee in his 14th season, I mentioned quickly, 350 victories at two different schools, national championships at two different schools, four on his resume. And this is the way it's been for McKaylee this year. He's, he's really had to earn the money this year. Up and down season, lost a number of different players. This isn't the team that he thought he was going to have, but he's molding them into something, something new and something better. He has the back set. SC by the way, hitting 471 to start this match, Kevin. Beautiful number for SC to start. And, and something they've been struggling with all year long. They are up to number six at one point in the season. So they were number nine out of 12. That's unthinkable for, for a team that has so many highly regarded recruits, so much power. SC's a number of Fab 50 on their team. Emily Young with the left. Emily Young is, is an interesting story. Was in here for the entire season until three matches go. Now she's a center, but she's in the front row. She can turn and go. Senior, she hadn't set since high school, yeah. where she set three years for club and high school. Yeah, and, uh, has been doing a masterful job. Also puts up a very big block at the net. Boy, that's all you really have to know about the struggles that SC had right. this year, is that USC, the number 20 team in the country, had to turn to a player who had not set in three years to lead the offense. It's, not, it's remarkable. And they've got substitutions to burn. They have got Huddens back there playing defense. They would love to have an ES. They have four defensive players of Whittingham on the court. The other three, for a variety of reasons, aren't available. Mick Haley has never had that happen in his career. Lice Pizzagola at the service line for SC. He's also got an extended playing time in the second half of the year. You look at the preseason ratings in uh, Washington actually right behind USC at number three. I think the biggest difference and the biggest prize, Scambray. The number she's putting on the passing she's doing well. No one expected her to do as well as she has been. Here is Scambray. Another Southern California product from Dana Point. Jim McLaughlin, of course, grew up in Malibu, the Washington head coach. So he's got deep roots in club volleyball in Southern California. A third of the Washington roster is from down here. And a third of them are from T Street, the club that Troy Tanner started. And his daughter, actually Bailey Tanner, in as a setter in this rotation. Once again, Samantha Bricio at the service line. Best serve on the roster. Oh. Maybe clip the tape a little bit, but that thing's smoking. Dug by Taylor Whittingham, and it draws an applause out of the SC bench led by Mick Haley. That's a lift. And when you look at the defense for USC, a big portion of its effectiveness, maybe 80% of, of its effectiveness is Bricio served Bricio's rotation right now. So, so much pressure on her. The whole room was quiet. And the Washington team freezes when Bricio's at line. A bit more of a roll shot there. Didn't have the heat. Got by Bricio in the back row. <laughs> by Strickland. Wasn't sure if she got to that one. 
Quartet. Pizzas a goal. Runs the middle to Ogos. Wow, missed opportunity. The free ball. USC that set a little bit low from Pizzas a goal. And Ogos has so much athleticism. Doesn't get use it. That ball set to her elbow. Where do you want it exactly? You want it the peak you of your jump. Right, you want it to get it up the right top that of your jump. Yeah. That's too long. It's all timing to run that middle too, is it? The timing, it's all bang -bang. It's the tempo, and the location. But when you get a perfect pass, a free ball, that thing's got to be down nine times out of ten. Alicia Oaks to serve for SC. He leads this team with 67 box. That was an easy play. Melanie Wade couldn't get enough on it. Oh, how about the block by Van Zandt? Van Zandt shuts down Ebony Wanaboo. Just slammed the door in her face. Reigning player of the year, someone who out of high school, she was the number one recruit, went on to the freshman of the year. First team All-American, the progression blue chip all the way. Van Zandt always plays well in this building. Overpass. Pizza oh, Seagull will reach for it. Oh, Nick Haley's going to lose it. Another play that could <laughs> either yeah. way. Yeah, Nick Haley's not happy. allowed to set yeah, that sure. ball as long as it's on her side of the net. It looked like that's her ball until the entire ball crosses the lane. Uh, right? A piece of the ball has to cross lane, but you can see such a bang bang play happen so quickly. And if you're aggressive like that, Melanie Wade, you can kind of move into it very quickly, and you really can't see where that contact was made. You have enough close calls like Nick Haley has, and you start hearing footsteps, even when they may not be there. Though. Sure, you see shadows, Halloween all year long, when things aren't going well. Whittingham shoveled across, see where Bills goes. Back set, off the block, and down, Kaylee Nilsson. Washington still attacking Ruddens. I'd love to see an adjustment. I'd love to see Bricio take a step over to the line. Whittingham, oh, there you do. You just saw the adjustment, so they're giving Ruddens a very small piece of court pass. SC needs to stop any Washington run tonight. Off the block, and Zan gets the kill. There's two in it. Pretty interesting stand right next to Mick Haley. He said on that play, come in here, come in here, and on Washington sits outside of Van Zandt. Well, I asked him point blank, how do you handle Van Zandt tonight? He said, just try to slow her down a little bit, force her to certain areas on the court. She only has two kills so far. It's Van Zandt with the roll shot made to Whittingham. Back to attack, Bricio off the hands out. Point SC and a big point. For That's SC. been her most effective swing. This is a very good start, Bricio. She's just hitting high and hard. Not getting too fancy, just being very aggressive. And so far tonight, it's been very effective. Uh, even in volleyball, sometimes less is more. Huh? Ebony Wanabu. Too long. SC's hitting number has come down just a little bit, but still very strong. S hitting 357. The difference is set. Washington is warming up now, hitting 321 after a slow start. Beals, quick back set to Kaylee Nelson. Kaylee Nelson had 14 kills in that Elite Eight and in this building against SC last year. And started the season off subpar. Her number's not as good, but starting to get in a, a rim, starting to get in a much better groove, and that's scary for Washington. SC runs the X. Hannah Schreier. It seems like SC is mixing things up, going left or right, they run middle, now we see the X for the first time. And they're controlling the pass, when they get that good pass, they've got so many offensive weapons. Lee Ruddens, the twin runs on the back of the home watch for SC. Oh, how about the angle shot by Melanie Wade, she just cuffed that ball from the middle of the court, right to the side. And such great vision, she can go either to the right side of your screen, or she can wait a little bit, hit it on the way down. Big angle. And almost did it straight down. Melanie Wade to serve for the Huskies of the University of Washington, number two in the country. First set is tied at 16. SC, some defense. Yeah, rare. She's had a tough 2013. Started off the season this year not playing very much, but of uh, uh, late has been putting up good numbers. Tim Nolan, Cookie Stevens, the assistants. 
from McHaley at USC and for Jim McLaughlin, Keaton Cook, and Leslie Gabriel. Although I found out just before the match started, Leslie Gabriel not with the team on this trip. She's home with her third child a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations, that's awesome. 17 17. Washington middle tandem. Best blocker tandem in the Pac 12. Also pretty good effect, effectively on offense as well. Emily Young is lethal with that left hand, that buggy whip at the net, because normally a set would be much smaller and probably wouldn't have that kind of angle on it, would be hitting right at the tape. Right, you're starting to see her getting her group the most aggressive she's been all year long. Really and like that. These aren't dinks that you normally see from setters. Again, SEO's in front, 18-17. Slide from Washington, there was a touch. Chrissy Jones. Chrissy Jones, another T Street player as well. Getting high numbers, big block on the outside as well. Didn't start off the season starting, but really has emerged and put some impressive numbers herself. Players on the trip. The University of Washington only has three players from Washington. <laughs> a lot of, they've got more double from California. Yeah. The one club in California they knew from the home state of Washington. Hey, you, know, you tap a pipeline and it's flowing, you keep the spig open, right? We'll see how much longer it flows now. That Troy Tanner at Pepperdine. Redirect, perhaps? <laughs> 1918 SC. <laughs> Even great Taylor Whittingham couldn't get to that one. Set of force at the net, the best hitting percentage for her squad. Sabelle also the best blocker on the team as well. She's always among the leaders on this team in hitting percentage. A couple years ago, she hit 400 for the season. That was a nice serve. A groan out of the crowd. Wanabu set letter right in the block of Van Zandt. Now Krista Van Zandt is on offense and gets turned back. Give some credit to Alicia Ogums. Can make her 68th block of the year. And Mick Haley's fired up. The fist pump right in front of us. The pride of Manitoba, Canada. Alicia Ogums, the player of the year back in that province and is doing big things. Her serve really effective, surprisingly effective as well. First SC scholarship to a player from the Great White North in volleyball. Michelle Gums. So she, she made history as soon as she stepped on campus. Vance hit cross court. No touch. It goes by point SC. And Wanabu makes a late yeah. angle move. Steps into this angle from Van Den and really forces that ball. You're going to see on your far right side of your screen that big step to the left. Forcing that ball out of I really like that adjustment. And Zant has more errors, three, than kills, two. That's big news. That's exactly what SC wanted to do. Oh, Chrissy Jones. Come on now. That was a change up. Everybody in the air, the ball just floats above them like a soap bubble. Figures the, the smart student would make a smart play. 3.875 high school GPA. What about Jim Watson? Never you right? bet it was <laughs> if you combined them all. <laughs> it's a Segola back to Anthony Wanapur. Dug by Cassie Strickland. Krista Van Zandt cross court. There's Taylor Whittingham. All the big names. Bricio involved in this point. Back to Van Zandt. Off the hands. Blocked by SC. Opportunity for the women of Troy. Right here. Good cover by Whittingham. Back row. Bricio blocking down. Van Zandt again. Should help no any way. Right, how effective Washington is. They had USC four free balls, four opportunities in the swing block, the footwork, the eye work as well. They get three blockers up on this pick. Make it look easy. That is anything but. And a timeout on floor. And, and you know, for SC, that, that was the most important point so far of the match. They get that. 23-21. They got a little momentum. They need to win this first against Washington, the number two team in the country. Now, once again, the power of the pack prevalent in the ranking. We're watching USC today. Who's number 20? ASU is a click in front of them. At number 19. AC Bruins Gardner. and Kurt Below are awesome. It's I think the they're low. better than 16. <laughs> Dave Rubio's got another good group in Tucson. We continue up to Oregon at number 12. Every team with a signature player, Van Sant. Yep. Melanie and the Wade. top two teams in the country. Jordan Burgess for Stanford looks oh so impressive.
that's the way it is right now. Washington and Stanford out of the top, both perfect. And look at that, from, from Oregon all the way down, or really all the way to Oregon State. It's just a posse now chasing the lead. <laughs> it's the posse. It's the long gen. And, and the surprise thing, USC rated 20, but they're RPI number 13. This is a team, if they string a few wins together, they could be hosting a postseason. And by the way, Washington, number two, is going to play Stanford, number one, on November 26th. It's in Seattle, and you can see it on the Big 12 networks. And we started hyping that up a month ago, and we all thought it was a kind of a joke, right? The two undefeated meeting at home, and there's been a lot of number one, number two meeting in the Pac-12. Never, though, in such a key situation, never so late in the season. Truly a special time if they can both get their defeated. Well, Washington better be careful on this trip because look at it already. They're getting a, getting a match tonight from SC. UCLA's waiting in the weeds. They're playing Washington State before these two meet on Halloween. 21-21 in the first. It's triple blocked by Washington. Van Zandt climbing on the net. And that's a point for SC. Plotting. They got one for him. Yeah, very good. Just a brief touch on the top of the net. You're going to see on the second attempt here, Van Sant on the left side of your yep. screen, on the follow through. You know why this week's a big week for Washington? They have a chance with a sweep here to, to equal their all-time best start ever. The last time, 2005, when they won the national championship. That's right. They beat SC, they beat Washington, they beat 23-0. and all. That hit the net, no, off the hand. Van Sant gets another kill, just a third of the night for her. Hitting negative for the night. Talked negative about the, one. the last match versus Colorado, struggling and struggling again tonight. She fakes the slot. A lot of boot. Dug out of the net with the left hand by Rudens. Essie yes, was groveling for it, but it carries wide. A point for Washington. Essie has been so many opportunities. This is one of their tougher rotations right now, though. So McKeeley wants to call a timeout and, and talk about his options. 23-22, UW. We know how good Washington is. Number two in the country, 21-0. 10-0 in conference. SC is a team that's still defining its identity. To win this match would be amazing. But to do that, I thought tonight coming here on the drive down in LA traffic, I had quite a, quite a bit of time to think about it. <laughs> yeah. I thought SC had to win for a set tonight to win this match. Totally agree. Yeah. At Stanford, they uh, really put a good match together. They were had all the momentum. They won the first, almost won the second. But when these top teams, when Washington, when Stanford play at their game and when they're in their zone, you're not going to beat them. So you've got to catch them by surprise. You've got to catch them early. And this is a tough situation right now. We see the history of USC. Well, six national championships and it's, uh, you know, a couple of different coaches. Uh, Jared Elliott actually won one here. Uh, as well for SE and Lisa Love was here for many years and Kaylee came in and, you know this has always been a very good program and even this year with the injuries and struggling well SE still ranked 20th in the country I mean that's a sign of respect and then the pedigree is still there and one of the stats that was uh, amazing is uh, as they were looking like they were going to head out of the top 25 1990 the last time they were not in the top 25 25 years right. ago yeah any week 25 <laughs> any years week, right Definition of success. success. Yeah. Well, there's Chris Van Zandt, and she is the big gun for Washington. But so far, only three kills, still hitting negative. 14 total attack. So Washington is beating the big dog, but SC is equal to it. And Kaylee said they would try to force her to certain parts of the court. Have you picked up anything? Seems to me they're trying to force her to go cross court, or at least make decisions. SC side to Schreier. Kept alive. Wadaboo's got a set. Is he going to get a kill out of that? SC dodges a bullet. That was a tough rotation for them. Young's in the front row. Maybe their best yeah. option. Now they get Bricio back in the front row and, and smooth sailing. Yeah, they looked a little out of system there, and they end up getting the point. Well, they don't ask how. They didn't have to ask how many, and we're tied at 23. Beals. Back sets again to Nelson. A little pinball offense, and Kaylee Nelson picks up her fourth kill in the first set. Van Sands, Michael Jordan, Kelly Nelson, and Scotty Pippen, and Scotty Pippen start to pick up her game, and that's boating kill 
for other coaches. I love that analogy, but does anybody understand it under 30? <laughs> you remember who those guys are? Jordan made Jews, right? <laughs> oh, backhander by Bricio to keep in play. Come on. Oh, this would be a big point for SC. Remember, set point for Washington. Oh, and wow. SC keeps it alive again. Gotta have it. No, it's the antenna. It hits the antenna. Yes. Yes. Somehow, yeah. SC dodges all the raindrops and buys the set at 24. Wow. They can steal this game. You can see on that far left antenna, Whittingham with a special, oh. special cover there. Two amazing saves by SC. Mere inches from the floor, and then the antenna bails him out. Now you gotta win by two. Doug by Iwanabu. Outside set, Bricio. Out. 25 24, second set point for the Huskies in the University of Washington. How about the dig by Wanabu? You know, she has been a player who's played only the front row all her career, and in this brief four match streak, she's playing great defense. And Young went on two, but on the overpass, Washington was ready for it. The stuff. And the Huskies survived that first set, 26-24. Well, it's a great comeback by Washington. SC played a great set, but just again could not close it out. And now, I guess the undefeated number two team in the country, SC finds themselves down a set early on. We saw in that first set what's been happening with both of these teams all year long. SC has played very well, but has not closed out sets. And Washington has always managed to find something. Washington had five different players with at least three kills in the first set. Great balance. And really looking like the same kind of effort against Colorado they had where Coach Jim McLaughlin said what we did well, we showed heart, we made plays when we had to, and that's exactly what you're seeing tonight. Check it, actually it was six players for Washington with at least three kills in that first set. Well, we talked about it already at the start of the show. Last year, November, in this building, the Elite Eight, not a Pac-12 game. This is go to the final four. SC was six, Washington was three. SC won the first two sets. Looked like they were on their way to the final four, and then all turned around. And quickly, Van Zandt starts to go off. Washington turned around. F SC actually has a swing for the match in the fifth set. Misses by two inches, and Washington wins the match. Goes on to hosting where they were hosting at the Final Four in Washington. Chris Van Zandt that night, 38 kills on 81 total attacks. That's outstanding. And for, for USC, Ebony Wanabu in a big match as well. She had three kills in the match. It was epic. And 3,000 people inside the Galen Center, and they were all empty when they walked out of here. SC was up two. Washington rallies back, and it's 17-15 in the fifth to go to the Final Four. And we were talking with Jim McLaughlin before the match, and five days later, <laughs> Washington went to the Final Four and got swept by Penn State. And I said, were you affected by the game? He said, yeah, we just never came down from that. And we were emotionally drained. <laughs> Nothing Washington to start the second. <laughs> Leonis Belton led Washington with four kills in the first set. They run the middle two to start the second. <laughs> Why not? That, that was from the hands of the setter to the right hand of Sebelden was less than a second. That time we talked about the low set from Pete's to goal. This time, if you're gonna miss, miss high. This time, Ogum's hanging, waiting a little bit and getting that ball to high contact right over the top. A lot of uh, experience in the Italian club league. It's Pizza Segola. Chrissy Jones, roll shot, Bricio's there. Middle of the back row, cross court, you want to boo. Too much for Ben Tanner. He's still an interesting story. We were talking to Coach Kelly, and Cinnamon Sorry was supposed to be in that setting position. It, and we were kind of joking, and it's obviously not a, a funny topic for Mick to lose such a valuable player, but he, he lost a player to his own school, <laughs> right. not another school. And, and the SC Film School, for anybody uh, who doesn't know, one of the top film schools, obviously, in the country. Don't turn down an invitation. 
will catch you post on it. No, to play no. in C volleyball, no. which is one of the top like, pro times you in watch the this campus and the buildings have names like George Lucas and Steven <laughs> Spielberg. You know, you, you don't say no. Set you up for what? Chrissy Jones, double block it. She just like, took a little off it and just kind of placed that one between the four hands. That's a pretty surprising combination of uh, athleticism and also the, the brains and the skills of a much more experienced player. So Bedlin leads Washington with five kills, but Chrissy Jones is second with four. I think McKaylee's getting what he wanted, and that is neutralizing Krista Van Zandt. But Washington is number two in the country and undefeated because they only have one attack. So much diversity on offense, and plus you put the serving blocking combo together, and that's a pretty crazy test to overcome. Ruddens into the double block, slowed it down. Next set to Nelson, down the line. You see the, too much the for balance from Washington. Really, it starts off with the right side. You talked about Jones, you see Nelson as well. They, they go equally well to the middle, to the right, to the left. Kaylee Nelson, a terrific athlete, by the way, was 10th uh, in the high school state high jump. A lot of the same principles that work out here in volleyball. I don't know, what, what other sports did you play growing up besides volleyball? You played basketball, I guess? Be a big guy? <laughs> Liz Brenner, yeah, she played quite a few. Racquetball yeah, world champion. Yeah. Van Zant. Oh, roll shot perfectly placed right in the donut of the defense. Another great dig from Kitty Beals, the junior setter. We don't talk enough about her, the location, the spreading that offense around. This is a flat out winner. Her high school team, 55 and 0 state champions. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good record, right? And they won <laughs> what the mythical national championship right. as well. Katie Bills went to Le Travis High School, which is down in Austin, Texas. Talking to some coaches, and they'll tell you that uh, it's very hard for a setter to win a game. They're, it's much easier for them to lose them, but Katie Beals, one of those players who can really turn something around. Timeout inside the Galen Center after Washington at last SC in the first at 26-24. They're rolling the second. Something you don't see often, traffic moving freely on Harbor, <laughs> Harbor Freeway just outside the Gale Center. That's downtown Los Angeles in the background. And Campus USC is located a mile south. 26-24, Washington in the first 7-3 here in the second. Jim Watson along with Olympian Kevin Waugh on the Pac-12 Networks. And I think this is a dangerous time for SC. I think a lot of the air went out of their balloon in that first set. And they got to get some traction right now as Washington can run away and head for the bus. And SC comes out of the timeout with the statue defense and watches this ball fall to the floor. And I think it might be time to give Lauren Gillis a chance. She's been uh, the, the lead starter in that Rudden slash Gillis position. And so far tonight, Rudden's passing. Her hitting's been okay, but the passing a little bit shaky. And right to Rudden's, and then SC sets Rudden's. Strickland chasing it down. Cassie Strickland. That's outside the antenna by Rudd. That would have been out anyway. And her numbers are good. She was hitting over 300 after the, that last time out. And you're, you're going to see hustle from Strickland off the court. Strickland, such an athlete, played three years of football. Growing up, Pop Warner. And she was a, a quarterback and a linebacker. It was pretty good, as I understand. There she is with a, a bump set over her head to Van Zandt. Reese tips over the fence. Strickland gets to it with one hand. Oh my goodness. Well, we set it up and there she is. It's not a highlight tonight, but they're going to show this at the banquet. How does she get to this ball? The read, the layout. You, you, you talked about the conversation she had with her parents a freshman yeah. year. Well, she's playing football. She was playing volleyball. Her parents tried to steer the volleyball. And finally, when she was a freshman, she went to her parents and said, well, realistically, I have a better chance at a scholarship in volleyball than I could in football. <laughs> So I guess I'll concentrate on that. That's awesome. Kid who grew up at Edison High School in Huntington Beach. South of Huntington Beach Pier. It's a 50-50 ball. Rudd thought she won the point. She gets the news late. Take a look at the play. You're going to see the jowl going up. And at the very end, Rudd's touching the top of the net.
Van Amp took it overhand in back row. And, and that's something that brings up what, what Mick Kaley was talking about before the match. The thing that makes Van Sant so special, it's not the in-system plays. It's all these crazy plays, the out-of-system plays. She still finds a way to be very productive in. Yeah, that was a great comment that he had. He said, it's the Van Sant on the good passes. It's Van Sant on the bad passes that just kills you. Because those are the ones you think are going to win. Right, and so many players are just trying to keep the ball in in that position. And she, to find some offense and be effective, that's such a bonus. 2011 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, All-Conference 2012, Honda Award winner 2013, and National Player of the Year. That's pretty resume, <laughs> she's not done. <laughs> and she's not the only one. Kaylee Nelson is quietly having a big night. Van Zandt has seven kills, but Nelson now has five. And the legion of Washington fans are, are breathing sighs of relief because their senior leader is starting to play very good volleyball. Haley Nelson made, made a huge jump her sophomore season. She's a senior now, but it was that year that she really started to understand this game and a play it on the court. Bricio got a big run up. It was touched. Point for SC. Stops the hemorrhaging for now, but it'll be six serving 12. Mauricio six kills to lead SC. Youngest player ever at age 16 to be on the Mexican national team. Back set to Nelson. Wingham who had a good first set. Washington's gone away from her here in the second frame. That never went across. That hit the tape and stayed back. Sabella gets to nine. So SC wins two in a row. Rare mistake from Sabellin in the middle. Best hit percentage. You only get there by being very effective and not making very many mistakes. You really get the, uh, the impression from uh, University of Washington is that they're kind of looking for it. They're, they, you know, they got to the Final Four last year and, you know, talking to the coaching staff, this is not a team that's happy with going to the Final Four. This is a team that really has their sights on getting to final prize. And I would think those expectations just continue to grow with each one of these wins. As you mentioned, they were only picked third in the preseason poll in this conference. Right. They weren't even supposed to win the conference. Now, Washington is 21-0, 10-0 in the Pac-12, and ranked second in the country. And really, the only reason they're second is because Stanford has the same record, undefeated. Actually, Stanford's 21-0. And Stanford's got that signature win over Penn State, who at the time was number one, but right. Hand in hand, this, these are two very equal teams. In fact, the Arizona coach, Dave Rubio, who's played a number of the top teams, including both of these, said he thought that Stanford was the better team. Dave Rubio, the Arizona coach. And, and Arizona's going to be at Stanford Friday, next Friday, on the Pac-12 Networks. I mean, their biggest road match of the year. Point for SC. Scambe with the over the line violation. One of her few mistakes. And for folks who don't watch a lot of volleyball, explain that. And on a wide shot, you'll see the lens on the court 10 feet from the net. Can't step over the line. You've got to be all the way behind it. It's so quiet in here when Mauricio serves. One hit tip. How oh, pretty was that? Bail Tanner reaches up with just the fingertips and squeezes it. Father Troy Tanner, we talked about him. He's a, the coach at Pepperdine. He's a gold medalist. He was also the coach on the beach side for Misty May, Kerry Walsh. Pretty good lineage there. Bail Tanner learning from another coach over on the Washington bench, Keegan Cook. Alicia Ogum. Ogum's such a bright spot. The athleticism, her father, a basketball player in Manitoba, in the Hall of Fame in Manitoba basketball as well. McHaley was talking about how impressed he was with the athleticism of Ogum's as a freshman. So you don't normally see it at this level. It develops the 
bodies change as, as they get older. They leave their teens and become 20-year-olds. There's that out of system play as well. Gets her feet to the inside on a set that's not very good and able to slap it very flat on a great trajectory to that back line. So many players will jump to the ball. Van Sant gets her to the ball, jumps straight up and down. They keep serving Ruddens as he goes back to Ruddens. Got to switch sides. Wabu. Strickland. An easy dig. And Zant through the hands of Whittingham. How and good has Strickland been away. in the back row on the defensive effort test? It's amazing when you watch Strickland play to realize that she actually came to Washington as an outsider. Right. That's what she was in high school. And First two years at the University of Washington as well. And they finally had, they changed her to Lero. She trying to chase that one down as he picks it up. And Jim McLaughlin had a, a conversation with her before this season. He said, you know, you can be a good outsider at your height, at your physicality, but the opportunity to move to the libero position, you could be a great libero. Nelson cuffs it down the line. It's out. Another late move on the line from Young. Blocker. Rudd's got to hit that overpass on, on one. Got to make sure she's watching that ball. But you see using that late drop step to the cross court. And it's working very effectively tonight. Well, this is the time as he needs to rally in this game. You cannot let Washington get to 20. Just wouldn't be enough time to get back. And if SC falls down, love two. Could be a short night. Remember, Washington beat SC in three straight to begin this month, October 1st, on the Emerald City. That was a quick match. Runs off the block down. That shot that we had, Mark Wilson, our director, got a great shot. You see all the faces of the SC players and how they were locked in. And it reminded me of that comment that, that Mick Haley made to us right before. He said, look, we've had a lot of disappointment, of injuries. We haven't gotten that big victory yet. But these kids just keep competing. There's no quit in them yet. They're still number 20. They still know there's some season in front of them. And a lot of that tone is set by the coach, and that's what I've been most impressed by. You, you will talk to coaches before matches, and they don't in the towel before the match has already started. But throughout the season, Mick Haley, the optimist, the, the encourager, and I really have a lot of respect for him because he's not usually in this situation. No, it, this is a, a different experience for you. Again, we're talking about a guy who's won over 1,100 games. He's been a volleyball coach for 38 years. Two national championships to diff two different schools. He went on to coach Team USA in the City Olympics. Actually, we have another Team USA coach in the house as well. That's right, McCain coached uh, the United States national team for fourth in Sydney, Australia, and in Rio in 2016. The great Karch Karai, the pink hat, now has picked up the clipboard and is coaching the U.S. women's team. Here with a, a couple of Team USA's Washington players, Tama Mishiro, sure. and uh, getting to see some high-level volleyball. This is a team, he's on a quest for gold, he calls it, and he won the first major championships for a U.S. wins team ever. They won the World Championships just a month ago, and this is a brand new feeling. This is a team that really, you get the idea, maybe they're a favorite going into Rio. Wow. Well, we can definitely say they're a medal contender, yes? The silver medals, we, we've had a history of silver medals, but it's crazy to think that the country that has more players playing women's volleyball, has more money going and invested in women's volleyball, has never won the highest level of women's volleyball, the gold medal. So why is that? They didn't have Karch Karai there earlier. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, it's funny because he's obviously the greatest volleyball player this country has ever produced. Maybe the greatest the sport has ever seen. But you didn't know what he was going to be like as a coach. Oh, and there's a uh, lot of skeptics Magic out there, Magic Johnson, right? Larry Bird, they were not good coaches. They were fantastic players. They just didn't translate. Yeah. But Karch Karai was a guy who was a pre-med. 4.0 right. student at UCLA, hardest worker in the business. That is not yeah, the he's same a, person. He's a technical thinker, right? I mean, you know, I, I was the last down. player uh, teammate of his before he retired, and I learned more in that six-month period than I'd learned in my 20 years combined of playing volleyball previously. It's true. I've often heard people say that who ended Karsh Karai's career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
13-14 Washington. Hoping to end your uh, TV career here tonight, too, Jim. We're halfway there, brother. <laughs> All right, so Washington has this four-point advantage, but SC is serving. Taylor Whittingham. S has got to make a stand. Here's their opportunity. Whittingham to set. Back set to Brice. And dug by Van Zandt. Strict on the bump, but they're just going to have to carry it over. Free ball here for SC. Back set. Ogums. And Washington's into the net. That's a point for SC. Now it's 16 serving 19, and it's getting interesting. Jim McLaughlin checking the clipboard. 12 consecutive NCAA tournaments for Jim McLaughlin and the Dogs. They won the national championship in 2005. Katie Beals. Set was a little high. Washington a little ragged here. Bricio again, double block, and again Van Zant. See Theodore Scambray again outside. Nope. Van Zant back row. Turn that wrist out. Bingham equal to it. Off the block. Fingertips. Strickland's going to get to it. Scambray takes it across. Washington still in the point. Bricio a third time. Roll shot is covered. Katie Bills was there. Strickland the bump. Katie Nelson. Best point of the night. One point time Young and Bricio knocked into each other. Looks like Young got the better of it, but the finish by Young as well. Oh, what a Zant rally. Not happy about it. You see that face? She could wait for this ball. Overpass. Katie Beals chased it across the net. Point SC. Yeah, this is a, an absolute surprise. The first set when Washington went on that late match run, you kind of expected that a young USC team going through a lot of different lineups now. For USC to make this charge late in the set, this is very surprising to me. Very surprising to Jim McLaughlin. Got a story, you see the pens, the different color pens on his uh, shirt. He gets a lot of hassles about that from all the coaching. <laughs> He's always done that. Yeah. Uh, uh, coaches in the conference, he said Mike Sealy sent him one of those uh, pens that had all four on one and said, hey, <laughs> instead of going with all the different colors, just use this one. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Jim McLaughlin, I mentioned, grew up in Malibu, and he actually was a, a volleyball coach here at USC. He coached the men's team back in 1990. He got hired when he was 27 wow. years old, but even then, he had the cop stat working. <laughs> wow. And the pens were there. They were present then. Well, that men's team for USC, national champions in 1990. Recognize some of the faces. Brian Ivey, Dan Greenbaum, you've got Jen Kai Lu in the back, Barry Sato on the coaching staff as well. That was right when I was in high school. These guys were the stars. McLaughlin looks the same in that picture as he does right now. It's the same face. Does this guy ever <laughs> age? He does. Just no mustache anymore. So I heard these great stories about McLaughlin growing up in Malibu, and he used to go surfing with Sean Penn and Emilio Estevez. And one of these days, I have to sit him down and, and ask about those days. Someone told me he's got a picture in his office, but it's behind one of the file cabinets. He doesn't talk about it much, but it, maybe if you ask him, he'll tell you. That's awesome. One of the best. We, we talked to him. This is not Great a year guy. where he's going to be happy getting to the Final Four. In fact, on, on his arm, he's got a couple of bracelets. And last year's one was uh, acquire skills and acquire them deeply. This year is until we get the wreath around our neck, the lay around our neck, we won't be satisfied. Yeah, he never talks about winning that, that 2005 title with his team. He talks about this team win their own title. And there's a great lineage now, and, and that's how they built it from the ground up. I mean, there was a time teams walked into Seattle and, and backed a couple of victories there, and, and well, they'd, they'd win there and, and then go out to Bowler Gym and Pullman and get tested. Now that's a tough trip both sides. Has been for a long time now. Tia Scambray. And really, we've been getting the squad through the, the last few matches. It hasn't been the seniors, hasn't been Nelson, hasn't been Van Zandt. It's been the freshman fire. It's been Scambray and Jones are both going off. 20 19. 
Mauricio is get fed now. That's out. Cross court. A little too wide. Mauricio looked up at the up official. Michael Yoshikawa saw the out signal, turned around, looked at the down official, Tony Chan, to make sure that he agreed. <laughs> Service error by Washington, haven't seen that much tonight. On the other side, really. And fair clean. SC's best blocking lineup in the front right now. They got a pretty good server as well, maybe a chance to mount a, a little run. Liche, pizza a goal for SC. Sophomore from Rivero, Italy. Got Messi for Washington. We go 21-21. Not a good pass, but that's a play Tanner's got to be running after. She's just watching. She's got, either got to call really loudly help or run after and set that herself. Now it's a four-point set. First one to four. Washington run middle is Sebelden. Chrissy Jones had a one-on-one -on -one and couldn't terminate. Rudden's back row and Van Zandt is there. Mauricio tips over three blockers. And Washington's into the net. That triple block. Somebody blushed the net. And Washington is giving SC too many points in this frame. Playing great defense is SC really... When you match that with the serving, that's how they score points. Somebody get it. There it is. A net moved. Yeah, you got to go straight up, pike across, and back down. A recoil. Van Zant back row. Preseed. Oh, oh, Strickland. Now the chicken wing is not going to work this time. Shoveled up. They call a lift, and SC has a two-point lead. The women of Roy showing some grit. And, and Washington's got to take care of this first pass. They've been in the system all night long. Some late struggles, very important. Washington had a big lead in this game, five points. And now SC leads by two, and Washington is a mess. And SC got a little gritty there. On a couple of missed connections in, it. Yeah, in the middle. Tanner with missed connection on the Washington side. And right back, the yeah. Pizzas Gola Ogum's it's just got to be higher. And you see the oh. frustration from Mick Haley. That's a free ball. Oh, he knew when that point 24 21. Down the line out. Tied 23. So wow. right when Washington's on the ropes, they come battling back. What a meltdown in transition. In That's a perfect play. It's in system, one-on-one -on -one blocker on the outside. You've got your big right side hitter with a great opportunity. Mick Haley talking with his center. Che Pizza Segola. You know, this is a really interesting lineup is the uh, USC. They they had two experienced setter coming in this year. They had Pizza Gola come in in here. They had Crone, a senior who's come in off of four years of playing time as well. And and midway through the season, he's had to change things around. He had to bring Young in as well. And and not something you'd expect. These are players who come in with a lot of experience, a lot of success throughout their careers. One of the things that uh, McKaylee told me earlier this year about Pizza Segola as a setter, and this is critical. He said that the hitters have confidence in her. What does that mean? They know that they can commit because that ball's going to be where it's supposed it's to be. It's location. Right? If you know location, if you know tempo, you can take your approach in and be very aggressive with it. If you have to react to a bad set in a location or in the tempo as well, you've got to play much more safely. You can't be quite so forceful. Pizza Segola had never been to the United States before she arrived at USC. She, she was found, Tim Nolan found her. Yeah, somewhere he, in, he had to hustle off after the film school <laughs> application got approved, and the next thing you know, he's on a flight over to Italy trying to trying to find a backup Boy, setter. That's, that's a long 12 hours on a plane, right? Right. You need your setter. And, you and think about there. it. USC this is a, a team that recruits well. Number one class in 2010, number two in 2013, 2014. They're not used to having all the pieces in place. Yeah, the, the freshman class is number two in the country. And, and for all the three freshmen, Abercrombie and Gillis all playing side by side. That's what it's been like. 14 different string lineups for us. 23 23, second set. And you could say a must be set for us. They get another break.
How right. many goals does Washington give away in this set? Right, and Jim McLaughlin looking at assistant coaches and looking at his clipboard and not liking either answer. Here you go, set point for SC. With SC's best server at the line. Precio. Goes right at Strickland. Van Zandt. Well, if you're watching him, that's just what you want. A service for Strickland. The great pass to Van Zandt, they go on to. And the great thing about Strickland, not trying to pass a perfect pass. Just pop it up in the air. Give your senior player of the year a chance. Strickland. Van Zandt. Wadaboo yeah. right to Strickland. She didn't even have to move. Van Zandt looking for two in a row. Cuff it down the line. Comes out with a point and a smile. And SC's 24-23 lead turns into a one-point advantage and set point for Washington. Oh, that there was a huge alley down that side. <laughs> right. You're not supposed to be able to hit that. That's why. Set point. Cassie Strick bombing it. Runs. Runs looking to extend. Back to Strickland. Chrissy Jones to win the six. Washington 2-0. USC not making the best of their opportunity. Washington on the other hand. Cassie Strickland, the big serve, the big dig. Up two sets to love, and you really think it could be exactly the opposite scores. Mainly walks over and, and slams his clipboard down because he knows how close as he was not just in the first set, but especially in the second uh, Mick Haley puts the headset on now and, and Like Mick, we're sitting ten feet from you So we're seeing the same thing, but obviously the motions much tougher for you both of those sets I, I know you feel like you should have won. Oh sure sure. I thought we had good chances to win uh, just made a couple of errors there after 20 in the second. Uh, thought we should have won the first one too, but you know, we're getting better. So if we can keep our intensity, we still have a chance to win this match. Uh, talk about the, the defensive intensity, really. I think one of the things that you guys are really making a trademark of USC playing very good defense. Well, we're getting back to that trademark. Uh, we've been struggling all year to find that since uh, losing Natalie, but Whittingham's coming on. Uh, Ruddens is doing a good job. Bricio has gotten a lot better. Uh, we're getting there. Hang in there, Mick. We'll see right. you in the third game. Thank you. All right, Mick Haley in his 14th season as a head coach at USC. 26-24 in the first, 26-24 in the second. SC has been that close, but they have nothing to show for it. After the break, Joe Savage in the Pac-12 Intermission Report. Welcome into our San Francisco studios. I'm Jill Savage. We'll get you back out to Washington and USC shortly. But first, the Stanford women have received more accolades this week. Inky Adonaku was voted the Pac-12's Offensive Player of Week. The top for Cardinal defeated 17th-ranked UCLA and 19th-ranked USC last week. Adonaku averaged a team best 3.88 kills, 4.5 points, and 1.5 box per set last week. Stanford now a perfect 20-0 on the season. Oregon State's Darby Reader was chosen as the conference's defensive player of the week. She recorded 30 digs in the B loss to Arizona and added 22 more in their upset victory over 18th ranked Arizona State. Her 345 digs is a conference best this season. We have more volleyball coverage coming your way. The Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week will be facing off Friday night at 6 p.m. right here on Pac-12 Networks. Cal still looking for their first conference victory of the season. They'll be in Eugene trying to get that done against the 12th ranked Ducks. Stay with us. We'll be back with your Pac-12 Sports Report update coming up next.
Bill Savage back with your Pac-12 sports report update. In Pac-12 football, the Utes are flying high after their victory over USC Saturday, but they'll have to finish the season without their star wide receiver, Drez Anderson. He suffered a knee injury in the fourth quarter of the game against the Trojans. Anderson is the team's lead scorer with four touchdowns on the receiver and the top wide receiver with 355 yards. Every weekend on Pac-12 football is must-see TV. This week is no different. All these matchups come your way on Saturday. I'll be back out in Pullman, USC, Washington State. That game kicks off at 1.30, but it all starts here on Pac-12 Networks at 9 a.m. In Water Polo, it's week eight. And the UCLA men are back on top after knocking out Sanford as this week's number one team. The Bruins held the number one ranking for three straight weeks to start the season. With their 7-6 victory over the Cardinal, they find themselves there once again. Pac-12 teams now hold top four spots in this week's poll. Stanford the one spot from last week, as did the Trojans. Cal remains number four. Long Beach State rounds out the top five. Stay with us. We'll get you back out the third set between Washington and USC when we get back. Washington beats SC 26-24 in both the first and the second. Jim McLaughlin, UW head coach, joins us now. And, you know, Jim, we know about Van Zant, but uh, you got some great balance in those first two sets. Melanie Wade, Scambray, Chrissy Jones, Kaylee Nelson, a lot of different points of attack. We do, and uh, the center's got to do a good job at distributing, and we got to find a way to get quick going. But, uh, yeah, Van Sant, Van Sant, but we got some other kids with a little bit of firepower. Talk about Chris uh, Strickland, Cassie Strickland, and the job she's done for you this year. She's, uh, I love her. I love coaching her. I love going into battle with her, and she can, uh, she brings a fire. She doesn't let people give up. Uh, she knows how to play the game. She's intelligent and goes hard all the time. It's just the type of person you want to coach. Appreciate the time, Jim. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Jim McLaughlin, back in Southern California, and we talked about Chris Van Zandt throughout the first two sets. 12 kills for her already. She got that slow start. SC was doing a good job on her. Has she changed something? Absolutely. She's gone with more creativity, and she's bringing an urgency. Sometimes she will kind of not mail it in, but she will not give the 100%. She's kind of one of those cagey veterans towards their, the end of their career where they know when to turn it on, and she has turned it on. 41 digs for Washington. They've done a, a number of times they've turned SC around that way. 20-24, you and I are talking off camera during the break. SC could have won both of those first sets. And, and two matches in a row where they played very high level. They played against Stanford last week, and they could have been up 2-0 there. They could have been up 2-0 here. You look at the stats, they're maybe the most surprising stat. Only one ace for USC. This is the number two serving team in the conference. Yeah, actually, those numbers were, were pretty even. And even hitting percentage, Washington 271, SC 239. And then you look up on the score, and it all makes sense. I mean, it's a 51-49 it's a match right now. Washington has just been a little bit better at the end of each of the sets. That's what experience will do for you. Washington has 13 sweeps this year. They lead SC 2-0, serving here to start the third. SC goes to Parisio. Strickland got enough of it. Bricio from inside, Bricio from the other. When Samantha Bricio first came to SC, her mom told Mick Haley one thing. Will you please teach my daughter how to block? <laughs> and it's because she knew everything else. She knew how to hit, and obviously she knew how to serve. Chrissy Jones, too strong. You don't go to USC to learn how to block. <laughs> you go to <laughs> University of Washington, maybe. You might go to UCLA. Right 
see those aces piling up. Big numbers every year, but this year just exploding. And it's funny because Mick Haley actually said, yeah, I love that Fabricio at the service line, but I need, I need more offense out of her somewhere else other than serving. He's trying to get everything out of her. Yeah. She's one of the top three points in, in the conference. You know, you look at uh, Van Sant and Fabricio, number two and number three. Uh, the only one ahead of them is Carstello over at UCLA, and she's putting up some crazy numbers this year. Carcelo, a great match here against SC as well in a 3 nothing Bruins sweep. You know, you, you look at what Washington does, and they, put, they turn it on at the right time. They, they make the plays at the right situation. This is a 21 and 0 team, but they're really tested. Seven wins over top 25 ranked teams, five wins in five set matches. Their closest match of the year against number four ranked Wisconsin, a battle of final four teams from 2013. That's out. You see Nick Haley right there with his hands in the air. Pretty strong guy he for 73. Walking the, the sidelines has so much energy. You really see he has his connection with the, the team as well. They could sell his seat. He's never in. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's only a few steps off the court right now. Bracio right for the SC bench. They just get a fist on it, but it carries over and out. I told you at the top of the show how good SC has been in this building. SC's overall record, 111 and 17 inside the Galen Center. It's only 17 losses, but Kevin, five of them have come this year. Right. SC's three and five at home. You're talking about a team that has won 87% of their home matches since they opened the doors on the Galen Center. And, and this team has dropped five this year, and now they're down two sets here. Including the first three of the season. I think it's really a, a, a season of phases in that beginning of the, the Pac-12 season. Not very good, but this is a team that's been winning the winnable games and, and barely losing to top teams. We mentioned it at the top of the show. Got to learn how to close. It's Melanie Wade. We saw her early. You know, that's rattling off those names. To Jim McLaughlin, the Washington coach, on his balance. Melanie Wade, five bills. Kaylee Nelson has six. Sabeldon has seven. Six for C. Jones. Even Scamby has four. And then right there in the middle is the tent pole. Kristen Van Zant with 13. I mean, this is a typical Washington match, at least statistically. You know, they're running Wanabu on the C ball instead of the D. The D goes all the way out to the pin. That C is a little bit inside, and it really takes away a lot of the court for her. Doesn't allow her to be as powerful, as aggressive. There's Van Zandt's service line now for the Huskies. Ruddens is a busy night. Bounces it off the hands. And Ruddens has her sixth kill. As he has led Fabrizio with ten. And then three players with six. Wadu, Ogums, and now Ruddens. Six each. Well, how about this? As he is hitting 600 in the set and they lead by one. <laughs> Washington's only 286. You know, and you look at this SC team, and they lost big losses last year, and specifically at passing. Natalie Haglin, the libero of the year. They lost Shaw, who was actually maybe even a better passer than Haglin. And they've got 11 freshmen and sophomores, so really a team that's in a rebuilding year. And yet they're still ranked 20th in the nation. Right, right. And then on the other side, you've got a Washington team. And just look at the experience. You've got Vincent, you've got Nelson, the seniors, and then you've got a boatload of juniors as well. Yeah, only two seniors on the team. But as you mentioned, big names, Van Zandt and Nelson will be hard to replace. But seven freshmen on the roster for a team that's 21-0, ranked second in the country. Not going to chase it down. They spray the return. And now it's 8-6 Washington. In the third, first two sets, identical scores, 26-24. And Beals just puts up a nice hittable set and then the smart swing on the outside from Nelson. It's, this is a Washington team that makes good decisions. Washington has won four in a row against SC. That's an all-time record for UW. Pac-12 
12 Women's Volleyball is presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. That's a Doug's eye view of Hollywood Boulevard, the famous Walk of Fame. Hollywood stars and Lion Hollywood over. When's the last time you were in Hollywood? You been to Grom, Grom's Chinese Theater lately, Kevin? A long, long time. Uh, Hawaii's a long yeah. way away from Hollywood. <laughs> That's where everybody, uh, all the stars, put their hands in the uh, concrete. John Wayne had really small hands. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Did you got a story yet, Story for another day, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's leading hitters tonight. Uh, Chris Evans hit 13, and Leona Sabel with seven, but there's Sabel again, hit 400. Just the balance of this team, this offense you talked about is six weapons, and they use them all effectively. You know, the reason I brought up John Wayne is because he, he went to SC and played football as Marion Morrison, Glendale High School. And Tom Selleck played volleyball here, right? And, and so does his, his uh, stepson as well, right? A7 Washington in the set, 2 0 Washington in the match. Kenny Bills has done a very efficient job tonight as the setter for Washington, distributing. Went away a little bit from Van Zandt early, but then came back to the thoroughbred. Anabu with the, the great transition set. I tell you, it's not that fancy for USC. Just put it up high, put it in a good location. Bricio, when she has her tempo and when she has everything going, let her be creative. You know, it's going to be a strange experience here for Katie Bills not having to split the setter duties with Danny Nagaris. Right. For two years, right? Nagaris finally graduated, now it's all deals. Strickland wow. got to that wow. one as well and almost got back up. <laughs> no good cross. And Team USC uh, celebrating a little prematurely there. Strickland nearly popped this ball up. Look at the change of direction. Yeah, look at the. They're already getting together for the group hug. <laughs> and Strickland's still digging for it. Van they like to run her down the middle when she's in the back row. And we saw Karch, and this is, this is an Olympic level offense right now. You see four options, you've got the big out of the back row from Vincent. All of a sudden, as a blocker, you are outnumbered. It really makes the matchups very difficult. Bailey Tanner into surf for Washington. Back set to Ogums. That's off block and down. Get Scambre and no kill. As you see the USC offs, only two weapons here. It's really impossible for them to get a kill. Instead of four offense weapons on the other side, you've only got two. Maybe on a tight side, you have three with a setter. Yes, he's got to identify a hot hitter right now. And with 3CL, great dip by Whittingham, but it goes over. Chris Jones couldn't finish the point. Auto to Strickland. It's been handled by Bricio. Yes, he just hasn't had an opportunity to win the point. Washington gave it to them at the end. Leanna Sepulveda dumped it in the net. And that's the one real misconnection. We're seeing Tanner with some of the other hitters in the front row. Talk about a senior like Nogueras graduating. And Washington has that one weak link. It might be the connection with Tanner still getting used to the speed of the offense. Pizza Segoa as he set her to serve. Tipton blocked. Ogums. Ogums is over 70 blocks for the season now. And Tanner trying the repeat. The first connection not going well. The second connection maybe even worse. This ball's going to the outside for sure. There it is. Off the hands and down to Scambre. And you can see Tanner, she's a, one of the best adding recruits out of high school. Really good to the outside, but still the collegiate offense so much quicker. Having a little trouble making it work. Seven kills now for Scambre. Second best of the team tied with Sabel. Still 14 for Van Zandt. Oh. 
I don't think Basti does that play up to 31. The three set in the gap between the two hitters. They're such a straight up and down offense. Go to the seams, get some horizontal motion, get away from the blockers. Twelve serving eleven. Seems like every time you look up Bricio's at the service line. Doesn't it? <laughs> I bet it does if you're wearing purple. Whittingham kept it a lot. Gets this a goal and takes it over. Tanner with the quick set in the middle to Sibylvan. You, you talk about Bricio's serve. You look at this offense. How the score is Bricio serve? The, uh, you look at the team aces compared to her aces. They're nearly equal. Her aces and everyone else on the squad. You see Sibel get behind that one. She hits a head ball. Right. Bricio ran into the triple block. Covered herself. Taken over by Whittingham. And are going to go this time to Van Zant. The block out. Point for Washington. They went front 13 12. And that last, that's the difference. USC out of system. They don't even get a swing. They're bumping that ball in play. Washington on the other side. They're going to get a good quality swing. A lot of times in trouble, they'll go to Van Zant. Makes very good decisions. got a big there is it deflected off a couple of hands coaches say she's about up to 70 percent and their numbers are reflecting it as her improvement has gone along the course of the year so the hitting percentage of this usc squad fractured back in the spring and you know it's not only coming back from but you lose all that conditioning you lose all that timing three months they said she couldn't do any activity oh. looking okay there Hit that ball pretty hard. Van Zandt closing the seam. This inside set, I don't love it. Here it is again. It's not all the way out. That way Van Zandt doesn't have to get all the way to the pin. It's just a little swing block and then a, a big press. There were four feet to Van Zandt's left. Right. Down that line. Between her shoulder and the pin. Plenty of space. Taking Strickland to her knees to dig it. Whittingham. Doing an excellent job in the back row for SC as well. Both liberos. There's Whittingham again. Buttons and Strickland. Second launch rally of the night right now. Wadaboo. And SC's going to win this one. An interesting that last rally brings up a conversation I had with Mick Haley about not every dig is equal. He, they have a stat it's called dig to kill and some digs when you control it and your setter can get a good tempo and a good offense that is more valuable than a dig that's just popped up and you're scrambling on plays and there's a lot of not very good dig to kills there in that play. It's a great stat dig to kill like that. Can you be back in setting? Sends it outside to Nelson. She tipped into the block. Another sign of experience play. Not a great set outside, a little bit tight, but pushing it in the block, pushing it out. That's one of the plays that Coach Karai made famous right there. 15 14. Now on the beach, I guess a tool the block. Just use it. And Mick Haley not happy with this call. And they reversed it. <laughs> they just pointed the wrong way, right? There's Karch. Dude, Karch, nearly as much energy as Mick Haley. You, you know, you think about all the coaches who are very reserved, not so much in volleyball. Tell Once again, Schreer getting in front of Wade and taking that wrist away, away, making her, forcing her back to the left side of the court. You see him doing a good job. Late moves at the net blocking. I think it's Gala's time. I think the Ruddens has done some things, but I don't. I think she's starting to look like she's losing some legs a little bit down the road. We've seen a couple of miss serves as well. Pass the torch. Let's see if McHaley agrees. Bracia and can hear McKinney perhaps just off mic on you're too slow, you're too slow. Wants to speed things up. Get to your spots. Walk and cover. 
Outside, Bricio, double block, goes corner, corner, and paints it. Big jump, big swing on the outside. Mick Haley is fired up. So much optimism, so much fire. This is the dig to kill. We're talking about good set from young. Find your senior star, your junior star. Make it work. Seems like a senior. Once again, SC leads late in a set. So far, they've come up short the first two. Trying to extend the match here in third. Here's your tips on the double block. Smart move, taking it off. And that's a good sit when it goes in front of Katie Bill. Such a great defender in the back. She's seen it all. The junior has, and you talked about it. USC has been in this position, it seems like, every single set so far. Well, SC has been living at the service line, Samantha Bricio, ever since she arrived on campus. And look at she's having a great year. And now you can stir among the all-time greatest. How about EY? Her 65 great career in Westwood. Logan Tom, 171 on the farm. Heather Myers, 173. And there is Samantha Bricio, 191, plus tonight. Bricio just crushed the wreck. Diva Tomkis is chasing down Diva, but Bricio crushed it last year. 85 bases, previous record before that, only 59, and not a sloppy duo. That was April Ross, the Olympic silver medalist, and Nancy Hillman. Bricio came tonight with 63 aces. And really, if you look at the landscape collegiately, there's two servers that stand out. It's Micah Hancock over at Penn State. She's a lefty who uses a corkscrew server, very different from anything you see. And then Mauricio, similar thing. She serves kind of like I would uh, equate it on the baseball side to a split figure fastball. So not a true spin, not a true flow right in between. And the stare down at the beginning may just kind of builds the anticipation and builds that pressure How level. Times I mentioned that when she's at the service line, the whole room was quiet and it makes you just stop and your eye goes right to her. Everyone focuses in on her. And look, it's it's not always who can hit it the hardest, just pounding it for the surface line. You need a little swerve on it, right? And, and the mental swerve, too. You're talking about that. When you're a passer, you're used to a certain tempo. Yeah. You get ready, the whistle blows, the surf happens. You have to wait longer with Briso, and that anticipation is a crusher. It's like standing in against Matt Bumgardner, right? You're, <laughs> you're, you're half beaten before you get out of the dugout. Free ball here for Washington. Scambray. Scambray had eight kills now. And, and USC, again, an opportunity, and they're just bumping over this easy play. So you're in tempo and transition. Someone's got to come flying in on that bump set and take a swing for USC. A free ball to Washington is like a point to Washington. Not a good pass. A serve received. It's across by Wanabu. Coming out when he's sliding with Strickland, it turns into a point. And we're, seeing, and we're seeing the same formula happening, right? Ludden's late sets, you, uh, Washington really dialing in on her. The passing starting struggle. I'd love to see Gillis get a shot right now. 18-18. As he's run out of time. Washington seven points away from a sweep. Strickland. This is ridiculous. It's not that she gets to everything, it's that her passes are pure afterwards. Popping it up for Snakes. Big high flat shot from Wanabu on, on the right back. That inside set is getting two blockers up every single time, so you gotta hit high, you gotta hit those hands, and very effective, maybe her best swing of the night. Wanabu's got 11 kills, so Bricio 14, Ebony Wanabu 11 for SE. She's been in cross court this time, hit the right side of the ball, turning it back down the line. Tattooing Bailey Tanner down the line. This is the rotation that's very difficult for Washington. They've got all three hitters stacked over on the left side. They've got to make a lot of motion. You're going to see Chris Jones running across the court as the serve's coming over. This is a good opportunity for Mick Haley and for USC to make a push and get a few points here at the end of the set. We've been talking a lot about Cassie Strickland tonight, and for good reason. Strickland uh, now has 24 digs. But Strickland, before this year, she was home in Huntington Beach in the summertime. 
She describes herself, she says, I never quit, I'm a fighter, I don't back away from, from challenges. Well, she was at home during the summertime and witnessed a dog fight. Everyone else backed away. Strickland got involved and tried to break it up. And in the midst of it, one of the dogs got a piece of her finger. So the ring finger, left hand, she lost the tip of that, lost a piece of her finger. When she got back to, to Seattle, Chip McLaughlin sat her down. He said, we're going to have a conversation about <laughs> making the choices. You're, you're an excellent volleyball player. You're a key to our program. We want to win a national title. What are you doing picking up dog fights? Kevin, if you were there, would you have broken the dog fight? I think I might get in there. I, I would, but that's why I'm uh, By the not water. Cassie Strickland. And you need a team. If you want to win a championship, you need a team. Yeah. You need someone like that who's going to run right through the thick of a situation and say, let's do this thing. That's what before, USC needs right now. You mentioned before Cassie Strickland was a football player growing up. She wears number eight in honor of, of Steve Young, who she said was her favorite quarterback, but not an idol. She said, I don't, I don't have idols because that's admitting someone's better than you. That's her mindset. Apparently I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's amazing about Scambray. You see this USC team struggling and going to Bricio in, in trouble situations on the Washington side. They can go to a freshman in crunch time and she delivers. Again, SC had all kinds of trouble with passing game. And, and, and we've seen it two times already. So I think you either have to move Rudden's out or you push her way over to the line. Get your two passers really pushing over. Make her pass just a sliver of court. But they're not doing it. Tia Scambre to serve. Kid from Orange County. Just south of Los Angeles. Service error. SC. Rides that to a 21-20 advantage. And well, every set now, SC has led after 20. And they're 0-2. And they're 0-2. Hey, look, Bricio's at the service line again. <laughs> look, she hits it down all the way. Rise on that ball at all. Let's do it. Right in front of SC bench. It's just a goal to get to it. But this is a free ball. You said a free ball for Washington is a point for Washington. You are right. Another missed opportunity. They get Washington in trouble. But Cassie Strickland making the smart pop. pop it up. Give yourself a chance. Chrissy Jones, aggressive swing on the outside. And, and then once again, USC doesn't get a swing. Is a point for Washington. You are right. That's out. She has missing. Good blocking front for USC. Very good server as well. You think Washington going to go to Van Sant, but that's what makes them so good. You don't know for sure. SC three points away from extending the match. Washington four points away from ending it. There's Van Sant. Stepping in was Parisio. Ruddens. Ruddens got blocked. We're tied at 22. You know, Ruddens is, is a player with a future. She's done a great job tonight, but in the pressure situation, I think you need some fresh legs. I think you need something different because right now she's not doing it after 20 points. Katie Beals for Washington. That's a bump set from Pizza Sagoa. Big swing nice from Ruddens on the line. Here I am, put her down, but she's taking the big swing and a great swing. High hands, very aggressive. Ruddens is a, is a legacy here. Her Aunt Kim was a two-time All-American setter here at SC back in the mid-80s. So she's she's got Trojan in her blood. That is out. Did not catch part of the line. 23-23. No missed opportunity. Yeah, Ruddin's name is up in the rafters. They are one of the, the numbers that they honored for all time's sake. Number three. EY had to go. The overpass took it right into the block. It's here for Washington to get to match point. the block down it's 24 23 Washington is set point it is match point
A Washington SC have played these kind of matches before. The three sets happened at Seattle October 1st of this year. But all of these games decided by two points with what they did in the Elite Eight. Right. Last year in November here, that one went five. And, and really, if you're Coach McHaley, you almost got encouraged by this result. Win, win or lose to them, because this is a team that got blown out a month ago. All of a sudden, you're competing with Stanford, nearly on your way to winning the first two sets there. All of a sudden, you're competing with Washington. These are the number one and number two teams in the country. And you are in competitions. You actually are in the driver's seat in both of those first two sets as well. So encouraging things. On the other side, you need to get your defensive specialists back. You need to be able to pull Ruddens out in the back row. You need Weed to get healthy. You need Anne-Marie Schmidt to get healthy. You need Wim to get healthy. One of your guesses, get them healthy. You saw a quick look there at the uh, the Washington upcoming schedule. And again, we'll remind you about their match against Stanford on November 26th on the Pac-12 Networks. And here's it's down the road for USC. So there's some winnable games there, and they're going to see they're going to see Stanford and Cal again. Now they just beat California in the Bay Area. Now they're going to get both of those teams in this building. Now normally I'd say that's an advantage for SC, but it hasn't been this year. Three and five at home. One of the best servers, the number 10 server in the conference back there. See if she can find Ruddins. That's been the weak spot in the passing. And then if you're USC, maybe go to Briso out of the back row of the pipe. Right, here we go. It's Matt Point for Washington. Krista Van Zandt to serve. Off the tape, rolls across. And that's the way it ends. With a thud. Washington beats SC in three sets, but only outscores him by six points all night. And the look on Mick Haley's face after that point does it all. That's the kind of season this has been. It's been a season of improvement. It's been a season, though, of a lot of frustrations, a lot of shortcomings, and trying to make it work. But tonight, just a little too short on luck, a little too short on talent. Krista Van Zandt leads Washington with 17 kills, and for USC, Samantha Bricio had 15, Ebony Wanabu had 11. How about the digs in the back row? Cassie Strickland with 25. By the way, great article in the Seattle Times on Cassie Strickland by Jerry Brewer. Appreciate his work. That's going to do it for us. For David Feldman, your producer, Mark Wilson, your director, my partner, Ken Wong, Stanley Kokich, stage manager, I'm Jim Watson saying so long from the Galen Center where Washington beats SE again. The Huskies get their 14th sweep of the year and the number two team in the country is 22-0 and 11-0 in conference. Dogs win in three.